<laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wanted to bring up a, a couple of things that I want to make sure people understand my philosophy on, primarily because of some of the testimony we just heard. Um, the Interagency Space Debris Coordination Committee put out a study not too long ago and included five other space agencies from throughout the world, and, and then NASA is the sixth, and it, it indicated that in that critical orbital regime from 700 kilometers to 900 kilometers, given the uh, current regulatory environment, we will continue to see space debris grow. It's not going to go away. It will continue to grow. And that's if everything stays the same uh, as far as launch frequency and the satellites that are launched right now. And, and we know that that is not the case. Well, launch frequencies are going to continue to increase. We've got constellations that are hundreds and in, many ca in, in some cases now thousands of satellites going into low Earth orbit. And this, this, uh, this is not going to be sustainable for the long term. We've got to make sure we're doing the right things on this committee so that we can mitigate the debris, as you talked about. But eventually, there's going to come a day when remediation is, is going to be necessary. Uh, and, and we need to be very serious and methodical about how we go about that. I wanted to ask you a question, uh, Mr. Cruzan, about um, you mentioned that we, the, one of the reasons to do the asteroid redirect mission is for propulsion. Why is it necessary to do an asteroid redirect mission to create the propulsion capabilities necessary for a Mars mission? So there are two aspects of, that are important. The actual funding of large-scale solar, elect solar electric propulsion systems, from the arrays to the power management systems to the actual thrusters. The other aspect is actually operating a large-scale system such as that in deep space for a prolonged period of time to get a good understanding. So why is an asteroid redirect mission necessary for that? It's an opportunity to test those critical systems. So it's not necessary. It's just something that would be a good idea uh, because it gives us a reason to do what is necessary. Yes. OK. Um, I wanted to ask you a question uh, regarding the FY16 omnibus. It directed NASA to have a cislunar habitat prototype ready by 2018 and directed NASA to spend no less than $55 million specifically on a habitation module. However, NASA's operations plan for FY16 only allocates $25 million, not the total $55 million, uh, to next step activities. According to the Next Step 2 announcement, quote, the initial solicitation is seeking ground prototype habitation systems, unquote. It seems as if NASA is only spending $25 million um, explicitly on the development of a ground prototype. Can you explain how NASA's other expenditures meet the omnibus directive of $55 million, uh, specifically on the prototype? So $25 million, $55 million, where's the other $30 million? Yeah, so there's uh, two aspects that we're looking at. You have the habitation systems, the things that would, at which you put inside the habitat, the life support systems, the radiation mitigation, things like logistics and the outfitting. Um, those are all core systems. And then you have the integrated habitat itself, the, the actual module uh, or modules that you would like. Uh, both of those are needed to go forward. In FY16, we're actually spending in excess of $70 million on habitat systems at, at the total level. Part of that in the integrated capability with industry, and part of that in also with industry on the habitat systems that we're actually going to be inside of that uh, uh, overall uh, capsule that we, or module that we'll be out actually building. So we believe we're meeting the intent of that by spending in excess of $70 million on habitat systems and the integrated habitat capability. That's so uh, is 2018, you, are you guys going to be able to achieve a prototype uh, habitat for uh, cislunar by 2018? In our current budget profile, yes. Now, when you think about, um, and this is just because I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, when you think about having a prototype, what does that mean? Does that mean it's going to be on the ground? Does that mean it's going to be in space? No, so it will absolutely be a ground prototype, and we look at form, fit, and function. Um, form and fit, um, obviously, we believe we can have high fidelity of those. The level of function is a level of ability to actually build all the various systems, either in a, in a computer mo model mode or actual physical hardware. So it will have high fidelity form and fit and, and variable fidelity of function, depending on what we see in our proposals actually on phase two. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm out of time. Thank you. Yes, sir.